Welcome to my guide to the CGP Set A Grammar and Punctuation 1 test. As I've said before, these tests are really, really good. They're only 10 minutes long, easy to fit into your day, and they're really good at improving your knowledge for the SATs tests. The link to these books are in the description. Okay, number one, which of the events below is most likely to happen? The key to these ones is to look for the modal verb which gives away how likely it is to happen. Uh, so looking at the first one, we will go to the cinema tonight. That's the modal verb, will. He might go bowling with me. That's the modal verb, might. She could teach me how to dance. Could is the modal verb. And they can tell us the story later. That is the modal verb as well. So which one is the most likely to happen? Well, if something might happen or it can happen or it could, um, we don't know for definite that that's going to happen. So if something will happen then that's the one that's most likely to happen because it definitely will. So that's the first one. We will go to the cinema tonight. Number two, in the sentence below, Louise told her dad about going to the park before she went. Write the correct verb form in the space to complete the sentence. Louise something told her dad she was going to the park so he wasn't surprised when she went. The correct verb form to go in here should be Louise had told her dad she was going to the park so he wasn't surprised when she went. Number three, read the sentences below. Tick two sentences that are grammatically correct. For these examples here, you'll notice that some of the sentences are split between two tenses. So for whatever reason, they start in one tense and then they end in a different tense, which doesn't make sense. Uh, so see if you can spot those two. The first one, remember to buy a ticket before you got on the train. I bought a hat, but I didn't bought a dress. We cooked curry for tea and we baked a cake for dessert. They will tell us a story and we will listen carefully. So the two which are correct are we cooked curry for tea and we baked a cake for dessert. That's all in the same tense that makes sense. They will tell us a story and we will listen carefully. That is also the correct one there. The other ones don't make sense because remember to buy a ticket is present and as you got on a train is past. And the second sentence as well doesn't make any sense. Number four, draw a line to match each sentence with the most likely final punctuation mark. You can only use each punctuation mark once. Okay, so we have a full stop, a question mark, and an exclamation mark. So we should be able to match these up quite easily. Uh, the first one that springs to mind is, where are my trainers? That is obviously a question, so we can rule the question mark out. The first one, get out of the house, sounds like somebody is exclaiming or potentially shouting in this case. So we would definitely have an exclamation mark for that one. And the third one, it is half past ten in the morning. That's just a statement. We don't need any fancy punctuation at the end other than a full stop. Number five, put a letter in each box to show which word class the words belong to. Uh, with these ones, what I tend to do is look for the really obvious ones, such as nouns, verbs, adjectives, and then anything else that you're maybe not 100% sure on can go in at the end. So the first one that gets my attention is sweets. Sweets are a noun, so we'll put B in there, cross that out. Uh, sour is describing the sweets, so that is the adjective, it's describing the noun. Love is the verb. And therefore, those must be the determiner. It's quantifying the noun here. Number six, read the sentences below. Tick the sentence which uses commas correctly. Uh, in this case, we have a sentence that is made up of a main clause and a subordinate clause. And what you should know is in between those two, there should be a comma separating the main and subordinate clause. So the main clause is, I still don't like cabbage. That makes sense by itself. That's the main clause. And the subordinate clause would be even after all this time. That can't stand by itself. It doesn't make sense without the main clause. So in between those two clauses, there should be a comma, which means that the first one is correct. Even after all this time, comma, I still don't like cabbage. Number seven, complete the table below by writing a suitable synonym or antonym in each box. So a synonym is the same as the original word. It means it's the same. And an antonym means the opposite. So looking at the gaps we've got, we have optimistic. Uh, one of the opposites they've given us is pessimistic. So we need a word that is similar to optimistic. And if someone's optimistic, they tend to be quite a positive person. So that would be my answer, positive. And likewise with this gap here, we want an antonym of the word courteous. So if someone's courteous, they're very polite. If they are the opposite of that, then they would be quite rude. 
And finally, with this empty one here, we want an antonym of the word vibrant. So if something's really vibrant and really lively, uh, the opposite would mean that it's quite dull. Number eight, read the sentence below and underline the subordinating conjunction. It's really important that you memorize a good list of subordinating conjunctions as well as coordinating conjunctions for your sats because they tend to come up quite a lot. So it's always good if you can memorize them. So in this case, the subordinating conjunction is the word although. I'll put a link in the description to a list of all the conjunctions that you need to know for your sats. Number nine, tick one box to show which word in the sentence below is an adverb. Uh, so looking at these ones here, wings is a noun, racing cat could be a verb, or in this case it might be part of the adjective, it's what sort of car is it, it's a racing car. So in this case the adverb would be never, because it's describing the verb, which is to see. So I've never would be the adverb. Number 10, add punctuation to the sentence below so that it's correct. Uh, in this case, it looks like we're going to have to use some direct speech. So the teacher asked his pupils, before we start any speech, we always have a comma. So that goes there. The teacher asked his pupils, we then start with inverted commas, is Marcus ill today? What sort of sentence is that? It's a question. So we need a question mark at the end. And then finally, we need to close our inverted commas. So remember, before you start the speech, you always need a comma. We need to start and end with inverted commas in the actual bit that's spoken. And you'll also need some punctuation in the inverted commas. And then because it's a question, we need a question mark. Number 11, put a tick in each row of the table below to show whether the words are main clauses or subordinate clauses. You should know that a main clause can stand by itself. It makes sense entirely by itself. And a subordinate clause is the part of the sentence which doesn't make sense by itself, but it's really useful to add extra detail to the main clause. So all we need to do is read the bit in bold and say, well, does it make sense by itself? If it does, it's a main clause. If it doesn't, then it's a subordinate clause. The first one, when Ryan arrives tomorrow. That doesn't make sense by itself. Second one, dad says that if we're good, we can buy some popcorn. So we can buy some popcorn. Uh, that does make sense by itself. So it's a main clause. And the last one, Ryan, who's my cousin, loves popcorn. So in this case, they've actually put something called an embedded clause in. And what an embedded clause is, is it's a subordinate clause, but it's in the middle of the sentence rather than at the beginning or at the end. So that's trying to catch you out, but because it still doesn't make sense by itself, who's my cousin, doesn't make sense, it is a subordinate clause. I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel as I really appreciate that. We'll hopefully see you in the next video. Thanks.